so my name is Jeremy Galula. I'm a senior staff technologist at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And my name is Ernesto Falcone. I'm the legislative counsel at EFF. Uh, my work primarily is focused in Washington, D.C. with Congress, uh, and I also work in the state legislatures uh, representing EFF uh, and, and the issues we fight on on civil liberties and technology. So, you know, we're joining us now because right now at this very second, the United States Senate is hold, holding a debate over whether or not we're going to have consumer privacy when we go online. Uh, there is a vote pending, uh, you know, look to my left because we actually have the Senate floor uh, live in front of us. And this is a vote on whether the Federal Communications Commission can enforce the law to protect your privacy when you go online. Uh, namely, uh, controlling the power of cable and telephone companies who have uh, an extraordinary window into your activities when you use the internet. Um, you know, Jeremy, why don't you kind of give people kind of the perspective of to what extent are we talking about uh, the power of the ISP? Because uh, I think regularly I see a lot of folks think they don't have any, you know, there's no difference between uh, cable and telephone companies and like kind of what the internet companies can see, Google and YouTube and the rest. Uh, but there is some pretty fundamental differences. Totally, totally. So, uh, what, to be clear, what the what the Senate's voting on is the FCC passed these rules that would keep your internet service provider from spying on your traffic, snooping through it, uh, inserting ads into your traffic, basically just playing with your internet connection for something other than providing you internet service. And when you think about it, you know, as as Ernie said, uh, you know, there's a lot of tracking going online. Companies like Google and Facebook. Uh, ad networks, analytics companies, but the difference, the real difference between, say, what your ISP can see and what uh, a company like, you know, Google or Facebook can see is Google or Facebook only see the data that your browser sends to their websites. When you're on Facebook, Google isn't seeing anything. When you're on Google, Facebook isn't seeing anything and vice versa. Uh, plus, you can install uh, tracker blockers onto your, into your browser that just block this third-party tracking outright. Uh, EFF has one. It's called Privacy Badger. It's free. It's easy to install in Chrome or Firefox. Um, and so you can really easily just disappear from this sort of tracking. But you can't disappear from your ISP's tracking. Your ISP sees everything you send because you're sending the data through them. You know, when you go to a website, they're the ones who carry the, the request back and forth. Uh, and so if these rules get repealed, It'll give ISPs uh, a lot of latitude in what they can do. So they could do things like, you know, just straight up sell your data to marketers. Uh, that's something that these rules would prevent. Uh, that's something they want to do. They're already doing to some extent right now. Uh, and it would allow them to do it even more. So, you know, just saying, you know, I know that there's this person, you know, this single white male age, you know, 32 to 42 or whatever who lives in this zip code or something uh, who just browsed for, you know, skis because he's going on a ski vacation or something. You know, they can, they can sell that data to marketers straight up. Uh, they could also t snoop through your traffic to determine that sort of thing, you know, what are you browsing for, uh, and then inject ads. So they could insert ads into your browsing. So you'll actually see ads on top of the ads that already exist. Uh, which I don't think anybody uh, wants uh, in their internet browsing. Um, they can do things like pre-install spyware on your phone. So this is mobile ISPs too. We're talking not just the Comcast and Chargers of the world. We're talking Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile. Uh, and so when you buy a phone from them, they could pre-install spyware on it that tells them, you know, these are the, the websites that Jeremy is visiting. These are the websites Ernie is visiting. This is what he's browsing for. Uh, and the real annoying thing there is that depending on how they install it and what it does, even if your traffic is encrypted, so a lot of people say, oh, there's nothing to worry about because I use, you know, all my sensitive traffic is encrypted over HTTPS. Uh, you could easily, uh, if, you, if you were a phone company, install something on someone's phone before you sell it to them that just bypasses that encryption. Uh, another one that's really, really creepy uh, is uh, in basically inserting tracking in IDs into your traffic. Uh, and so this is another one where basically the ISP could say, I want to make it, you know, you've installed Privacy Badger and it's, you know, you're blocking all these tracking cookies. I'm just going to override that and insert more tracking cookies. And you can't do anything about it. And we saw Verizon do this. This was that whole uh, zombie cookie issue, the uh, undeletable, undetectable uh, cookie that Verizon said, oh, we'll just insert this into all of our customers' traffic. 
Um, so there's a lot of really disturbing things and outrageous things. And to be clear, these are all things that these companies have already done. So we know they can do it. We know they've done it before. We know they want to do it. Uh, and our concern uh, is that without these rules, they're going to do it again in the future. Well, and let's let's uh, kind of go into kind of what the rule. So, you know, it's worthwhile to remember that the companies, when they engage in these activities, were kind of entering a legal gray space. Uh, they had to really debate whether or not it was even legal for them to do it. And the FCC, when they updated the privacy rules uh, a little about a year ago, less than a year ago, I mean, uh, pretty much put a red line and says, no, not lawful. Uh, so, by, because even that Verizon issue, I mean, they, they got in trouble, you know, at the end of the day, correct? They did, uh, but it's unclear, you know, after the, if this sort of rule is rolled back, right? whether or not the FCC could, could enforce it again. Right. So, so one thing I'm curious, Ernesto, is, you know, these rules sound pretty common sense, straightforward. Get the consumer's consent before you use their private information for something besides providing them internet access. Mm -hmm. So who is pushing back against this? Which, I mean, obviously the ISPs are because they want to sell the data. Yep. But which lawmakers? I mean, this sounds like a pretty underhanded thing to do. I mean, it sounds very much sort of like the swamp culture that Republicans have been fighting against and saying they're going to get rid of, you know, draining the swamp in D.C. So who's yeah. actually going along with the ISPs here? So the primary author of the Senate bill that's moving right now is Senator Jeff Flake from Arizona. And I think what the cable and telephone industry have done is essentially uh, convinced him and a handful of legislators that are pushing along that what they're doing is no big deal, right? That what they're doing is uh, not real seismically changing the privacy rights of, of American consumers. And at this moment, these, these senators believe that. They, they're they incorrect when they think that, but that's what they think and, and they're, they're misled uh, or, or you know, at best or misguided at, at worst. Um, it's worthwhile to remember that these are these companies have been controlled in this sense uh, in terms of they have to have your permission before they use your personal information for the better part of 20 years. And right now they just see an opportunity to kind of bamboozle Congress. You know, this is namely like Comcast, Verizon, AT&T, kind of the biggest players who have legions of lobbyists in, Washington, in, in D.C. that actively talk to Congress uh, that have basically convinced them that repealing the current FCC broadband rules will somehow protect privacy because it, there's, there's an underlying law that regulates them today. Um, but at the same time, you know, undo what they call harmful regulation, which is so, essentially bogus, uh, to say the in kind terms. So, so which sen? I mean, you mentioned Jeff Flake from Arizona, uh, but like, who? How do we think people are going to vote on this? You know, this vote's going to be happening in twenty minutes. Like, yeah, how do we I, think it's going to shake down? You know, I think it's 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 tightly divided in the United States Senate right now. And what what I really want to convey to folks is is if you have a moment to pick up the phone and call your senator. Uh, and to tell them where you stand on, on consumer privacy. Demand that they stand up for your legal right to be to have your information uh, protected when you go online. So, uh, so to be clear, you can go to act.eff.org, and right on the page right there, there is a, uh, you can click, you'll get to our action alert, uh, where you can, it w we will automatically connect you. You punch in your address, we'll automatically connect you to your senators and representatives. Are there particular senators we're, we're targeting? Yeah, we you know we're we're pushing for every single senator, but the 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 reality is about thirty senators or so have already come out in favor of of ending consumer privacy. Uh, if you go to the the bill is uh, SJ Res thirty four, if I'm yep. correct, and you can see who who it is on the co-sponsor list. Um, the folks we're targeting and pushing hard are, are, are folks who have made it an, have made their opinion public. Uh, you know, senators from uh, Susan Collins from Maine, for example, uh, Senator Portman from Ohio. If you're so, if I list out states, if you're in these states, call those senators ASAP. Yeah. So let, let's be clear. These are the senators we think we can convince. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this has become a very partisan issue, and we think it's going to be almost a party line vote. Uh, and so what we need to get are Republican senators who uh, either haven't made up their mind yet, maybe they're going to be facing re-election uh, within a year or two. Uh, and so we need to get them to vote no on this. Yeah, and, and let me kind of, it's worthwhile to explain why this is really kind of a Senate Republican uh, play right now is, you know, one, they're the majority party in the United States Senate that control the agenda. Uh, and to the procedure that Senator Flake from Arizona, the author, is, is pursuing is called the Congressional Review Act, which allows him to bypass the filibuster, which would have required 
uh, eight Democratic senators to have agreed. So really, this is, you know, for the most part, this is within the ballpark of the Senate Republicans have to decide as a majority party whether they would agree um, by 51 votes or not. And they have 53 seats in the United States Senate, and the Democrats have 47, or sorry, they have 52, and the Democrats have 48. So just purely on a 52-vote margin, they can get this through to the House. Uh, the next step would be, be, obviously, the United States House will then mm -hmm. take it up, and, and the fight will continue uh, from there. Yeah, so so again, we're targeting senators like uh, you said, Susan Collins. Yeah, I mean, so in you, Maine, know, if you look at the states that. Portman in Ohio, you know, uh, Toomey in Pennsylvania. There's Senator Garner from Colorado. These are senators who have not taken a public position that if three of them uh, decided to vote no right now in the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes uh, or, or, or withheld their support by abstaining from voting altogether. Uh, if they're undecided, that then they would kill the bill. They would prevent it from moving forward. Um, so we've got some questions. Um, so I'll, I'll just jump in the the first one. Actually, we get is you know can I just browse in incognito mode to avoid being tracked by my ISP? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. Uh, all incognito mode does on your browser is it basically deletes cookies when you close the browser. So it actually helps you avoid being tracked uh, by companies like Google or Facebook, double click. Uh, it doesn't do anything for tracking by your ISP because it doesn't change how your traffic is sent. It, your ISP can still see all of the traffic. Uh, the only way you could avoid being tracked by your ISP if these rules uh, get repealed is using a VPN. Uh, and that costs money. That just straight up, it's basically, Cong the Republicans in Congress are basically saying, we're going to say that people have to pay a privacy tax. Uh, if they want to keep their data private, and that'll take the form of a VPN. Um, and, you know, we think that's ridiculous. We think that you should be able to browse freely without having to worry if your ISP is snooping on you. Well, and if, and if I can add to that, too, I mean, what, what's ironic in all this is uh, Senator Flake and, and the proponents of repealing these rules are arguing that the FCC overreached. Right, and, and that's a common refrain. The government overreach, and, and frankly, we see very often that the federal government does overreach in, in, in other uh, other instances. But sometimes the government gets it right. Right, like once in a while, there's times where, and in this instance, the rules are your ISP can't look in your browsing history. The ISP cannot know what you do on applications, and we see no reason why that's not a good rule. Right, we we see that. Uh, that kind of squares the, the rules for, that govern cable and telephone uh, back in place with where Congress decided in the 90s. I mean, and if you look at, um, I mean, that's, that's the unfortunate thing is I think senators have forgotten their own decisions as Congress, but they've told the FCC 20 years ago, consumers have the right to decide by, you know, whether or not their information is used in ways they don't agree. Uh, and the FCC adopted a consent regime. So you're, you're going to see, uh, undoubtedly, if you confront your senator and they voted for this today, you're going to see them kind of do this, this game of saying, I believe in privacy, and the FCC was wrong in where it went, and that somehow their vote didn't actually undermine your, your, your legal right to privacy. All that's ridiculous. It's all, it's, all, um, you know, it's all obfuscation to try to get away from the fact that the people who are pushing them to do it is, is your cable company, your telephone company, who see an opportunity right now when Congress is engaging in multiple repeals of multiple things in all directions to kind of exploit the ignorance of lawmakers who decided that these companies do not ha have the right to use your information without your permission. So, so another question we get is, uh, you know, isn't the, the federal, so we're, we've been talking about, to be clear, we say FCC, Federal Communications Commission. But isn't the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, the one that's supposed to be regulating privacy? So both agencies are involved in this space and have been involved for a long time. The, the extraordinary problem right now that we're facing is uh, if you're living in the states of uh, California, Oregon, Washington, Montana, Nevada, Alaska, Hawaii, uh, and, and Arizona, ironically enough, given that's the senator pushing this, the Ninth Circuit recently ruled that the FTC does not have the power to, to discipline what are called common carriers, which is essentially your telephone and cable company. Um, Wait, so you're saying that the, the, a court said that the FTC can't regulate, can't discipline, like if my ISP sells my data without my permission, yeah, the FTC so, can't do it because a court said so. So it's a recent, yeah, it's a recent decision. This is AT&T Mobility versus FTC. 
And what the court found was since the Federal Trade Commission historically has not been allowed to, to go after what are called common carriers, uh, and since the, the broadband industry is a common carriage industry, that from this point forward, the FTC doesn't have jurisdiction. And, you know, if I was, you know, I know for, you know, in, I know the cable industry and the telephone industry, when they saw this ruling, you know, you were talking about the, a huge sector of this country, a, a broad, broad swath of the West Coast and Mountain, Mountain West. Um, they know if they can get Congress to pass this law now, that they will have no federal agency that has clear power to enforce the, uh, the rules, um, to, to go after their privacy invasive uh, practices that Jeremy talked about earlier. And, you know, they're counting on ignorance in Congress to, to not see that they are basically freeing them in a way that they've never been freed in the past. So we'll be left to our own devices. Like, we, there will be no one, no cop on the beat to, to protect us yeah, at from the, at the invasive ISP practices. I mean, it's going to be very difficult at the federal level. Uh, the states can be more active, but at the same time, this is the... This is how sophisticated the ISP industry is in, in lobbying. I mean, I've worked, I've, I've had to fight these folks for, for a very long time, for most of my career. And what they do, what they did at a number of states, uh, including our own home, home state here in California, is gotten themselves deregulated out of public utility commissions uh, and restricted the power of state attorney generals to go after them, with the argument that the federal government already regulates us. So therefore, why do we need regulation at the state level? We have too many regulations. We need to, you know, we need to cut back on some. Um, so there are parts of this country that there, there is no consumer protection agency that has clear power to police them. Um, these are companies that, you know, I've lived in five places in, a number, in the last uh, six or seven years. Everywhere I went, I had only Comcast as my option as high-speed Internet. Um, you don't have a lot of choice in a lot of places. So, so, we, so we've got another question. Uh, Matthew asks, uh, is there any wordage, uh, if it passes, that it will allow them to give it, I presume, our data openly to law enforcement without a warrant? So if this repeal passes, can, can you know, Verizon suck up my browsing history and then, you know, the local cops say, hey, what's Jeremy been browsing? And they're just like, sure, here. So the, the where, wherever a warrant's required now will still, will still be required. However, the, the challenge is it's the third-party doctrine still uh, pollutes kind of our privacy rights when it comes to law enforcement. Namely, when you share your data with a private company, the courts have taken a fairly lenient view that you've, you've lowered your reasonable expectations of privacy, which is kind of the legal term for when a warrant's required by the Fourth Amendment. The argument I've told a number of, of, of members of Congress is, you know, wherever the private industry goes in terms of aggregating, collecting, and amassing people's information, the government's not that far behind. Yeah. Um, th this is going to be a moment when ISPs suddenly become, because again, just to remind people, ISPs don't do this as, as, as a general matter, you know, outside of really pushing the limits of the law that existed prior. Uh, they will not be allowed, if Congress did not pass this law, to collect your information in terms of where you browse, uh, what applications you use. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's the big point, is that if this, if this gets repealed, then ISPs will start collecting more information. Yeah. And so there will be more for them to give to law enforcement with or without a warrant. Whereas if, this, if these rules stay on the books, there's no reason for your ISP to start recording your browsing history uh, because they can't start they making money off of it without yep. your permission. Yep. Uh, and so I think that's really where the, where the key distinction is. Yeah, is I, the warrant requirement will be the same. It'll just be the data will happen to be recorded in a much easier place for, for law enforcement to go with or without a warrant. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll essentially just be much more attractive to law enforcement. I mean, anyone that collects a lot of information becomes an attraction to law enforcement to, to, to take that information. Um, and as we've advocated in, in, in recent months, uh, delete your logs you know, to the, to the you know, companies that do collect data because you can't surrender information to the government that you don't have in the first place. Yep. So uh, Kathleen sa uh, points out that this is really good information since there are a lot of users uh, who know the plug and play functionality of computers in the, or who only know uh, the plug and play functionality of computers in the internet and many have no idea how search engines, websites, servers, and data actually intertwine in the process. And this is something, you know, that we have to fight every day at EFF because as, as Ernie alluded to, you know, a lot of these senators don't understand how the internet works and so they're getting bamboozled. Uh, misled by lobbyists in Congress. And of course, you know, the big ISPs have a lot more money for lobbying uh, than, you know, the, the little guys like EFF. 
Um, so we do what, what we can to get the information out there. And so that's, that's why we've been uh, sort of pushing out, you know, a lot of inform informative blog posts explaining that, you know, you may be tracked a lot online now, but you will be tracked everywhere. And so there's a big difference between tracking, being tracked some places and the company that you are paying, you know, whatever, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars a month, uh, deciding to also track you so they can get a little money on the side selling your data. Uh, selling what you browse, what apps you use, what you're searching for, what websites you go to. You know, it can be where you bank, what your political inclinations are. Think about, you know, when you look at a, a news website, they can know what sort of news websites you go to. Uh, depending on whether the news website's using encryption, they can know exactly what you're reading yep. to then try and target you with ads. Um, and who knows, like, beyond targeting of ads, what they would do with that information, right? It, 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 these are profit-making entities that their job is to figure out how to maximize the value of the information they have in their hands. Um, the law has prevented them from ever entering that market in the first place. And for some reason, you know, like I said, Senator Flake and, I, and the senators are pushing this repeal, feel that that is somehow unfair that you, know, you as the consumer who have no choice, when you use a communications provider, you have no choice but to tell them where you're gonna go, right? You have no choice to tell them what website you're gonna visit, uh, no matter how sensitive that is to you, to you don't want the world to know, and that somehow it is unfair that the company you've already paid, you've already compensated through your subscription, uh, doesn't have the power to, to double dip, right? To, to, to make it a little extra money on, on information that's not theirs, it's yours. So, so I'm guessing if, uh, we've got some more people joining us now who maybe didn't see it in the beginning. So um, just to reiterate, I'm Jeremy Galula. I'm a senior staff technologist at EFF. And uh, Ernesto Falcone, I'm the Legislative Counsel at EFF. And uh, so if you're just joining us and you've been hearing about all these terrible things uh, that your ISP could do if these rules get repealed, uh, I want to reiterate that we can stop this. We can keep Congress from pushing this through. Uh, we, can, we can kill it uh, and protect our privacy protections. Uh, and so the way you do that uh, is you call your senators, you call your representatives, go to act.eff.org, act.eff.org. Uh, and right there on the page, there is a link that you can click. Uh, you fill in your address, and it will automatically figure out who your representative, who your senators are. You call them. And in particular, we need to target uh, Republican representatives, Republican senators, because it's become a partisan issue. I don't understand why. Uh, I don't think privacy should be a partisan issue, but just that's the way the votes are shaking out. Uh, and so if you care about this and you live in a, a red state, a purple state, uh, you have a Republican senator representative, call them and let them know. Um, and, and just, you know, I think if they, you know, hear from enough of their constituents that this is something they care, that you care about, that we care about, uh, I think we can stop it. I think we've got a good chance. Yeah, I, I really want to emphasize this. The, you know, in a previous life, I actually worked in Congress, and I, and I will say definitively, when people speak out, when people organize, when people take the time to pick up the phone and make that phone call, it matters. I feel it, like I'm an in, on an NPR pledge drive or something here. <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, it really matters, and I and I and I'll say this. I mean, I think because um, they're used to most people not taking the time to reach out, right? Because that's kind of the gauge that a lot of lawmakers think about the politics. They think, well, if no one if no one cared enough to tell me they cared, then I can assume where that either people just didn't care enough, or um, they're supportive of where I was going. And, and, you know, for, for those of you that live in a state that have, has a senator that's pushing this, disabuse them of that notion. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, tell, them that, tell them that you care and that, you know, you're going to hold them responsible at the ballot box when it comes time to it. So, so Kathleen asks, is the repeal effort bipartisan? And, and we've sort of allu so, alluded to, yeah. but to make it explicitly clear, no, it is a Republican-led process uh, for, again, I don't understand why uh, it doesn't seem like it'd be a Republican issue. Maybe it's because that's just who the, the, the well, big ISP lobbies figured they could target and convince. Uh, I do know that one of the Republicans, the Marsha Blackburn uh, in the House, uh, who's leading this on the House side, Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee, you know, companies like Verizon are definitely in her top 10 uh, contributors to her campaigns. Um, and so, so, yeah, and, and there's that. You know, as of right now, the only sponsors and co-sponsors of the, of the bills in the House and Senate are Republicans. Um, you know, we don't know if any Democrats will vote for it until they actually hold the votes very soon in the United States Senate. Uh, but it seems, at this moment, it seems likely it'll, it'll shake down to whether three Republican senators decide to vote no to kill it 
uh, presuming at, at this point that most the Democrats will probably stick together um, as kind of has been has been the pattern right now in, in, in the United States Senate. I mean, certainly I, in the, the debates we've been watching, every debate, every, you know, senator who comes up to debate it, uh, it's been a Democratic senator voted saying, no, this is a terrible thing. Do not repeal these rules. We need to keep them. And a Republican senator saying, no, it's going to kill innovation, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, or that it's you know unfair to the broadband companies as if they need you know special help. Uh, yeah. if- I mean, one thing that the cable companies and telephone companies are very good at in D.C., uh, having seen it personally uh, as a staffer and having having fought against it in, 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 in consumer advocacy, is they they look at what the rhetoric is of the political party and then they try to to contort what they want to change uh, into that rhetoric, right? So they're going to make an argument that this is somehow a free market decision or this is somehow uh, this, this, is, this is pro-free market to get rid of, you know, people's privacy protections. Uh, I, you know, fundamentally disagree with the idea that if consumers themselves are not the ones that decide that they can share their information or not, right? I mean, if, if, it's, if it's a compelling product. It should be your product, choice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's a compelling product that the ISP wants to offer you in exchange for your information, you have the power under the rules that they're trying to repeal to agree. And that seems exactly what a free market's about, right? You yeah. decide as a consumer whether or not you're going to give that away. Uh, what they want, what the cable companies, I mean, cable companies want to change it to, is they take your information and and then you really have no power to say no. Yeah, I mean, the only innovation it's going to kill is the innovation to use your data without your permission. Uh, so uh, Matthew asks, with this, will we be able to FOIA politicians' browsing history? <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I think the answer is no. Uh, this doesn't give the government anything, and of course you can only FOIA things. Uh, and for those who don't know, FOIA is Freedom of Information Act. Uh, so this is how you get government records if they haven't been released. Uh, and so sadly, uh, no, this wouldn't help us in that department. Um, certainly, it would be interesting that ISPs might start collecting uh, or would have perhaps politicians browsing but history. They'll definitely and, have that. And, and then, you know, if an ISP gets hacked, yep. uh, who knows what's going to leak. And so if I were a politician, I would be thinking about that and thinking, you know, maybe this is in my best interest not to not to repeal these rules. I mean, uh, but it's not going to affect FOIA in, in any way. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's kind of the tragedy in, in all this is, is they, they, as politicians, have to kind of feel the personal ramifications of the terrible decision they're, they're engaging yeah. in right now. Um, and that shouldn't be the case, yeah. right? You should understand um, kind of the fundamentals of what we're talking about here. So we've got another question from Jose. Uh, will EFF create TLS everywhere? Uh, so this is, this is alluding to, so just to explain, because not everybody knows what, uh, what TLS stands for. Uh, so to start, EFF has this browser plugin called HTTPS Everywhere, which you install it, and anytime a website supports an encrypted connection, you can use it. It, it automatically takes advantage of it. Uh, but not every website supports encryption. That's up to the website. Uh, lots do, but not all do. Uh, so TLS is basically stands for Transport Layer Security. It's the acronym for in, the encryption that websites use. So I guess what Jose is asking is, will we make it so that all websites can be encrypted? Uh, and in some sense, we've already done that. So we've already created, uh, we've partnered with Mozilla, uh, with Akamai, uh, with a few others, to create uh, a certificate authority called Let's Encrypt. Uh, and so this is a, basically what it comes down to uh, is anyone who runs a website can get the encryption up and running on their server for free automatically with basically like you type in two things at the command line of your server. Uh, so in some sense we've done that, uh, but of course what we can't do is force a website to use encryption. Uh, that comes back to the website. And certainly, uh, if every website was using encryption, that would eliminate a lot of the, the snooping that an ISP could do. But to be clear, it wouldn't eliminate all of it. So the ISP would still be able to tell which websites you're going to. They wouldn't be able to see what you're viewing on the website. But if you went to EFF.org uh, or Facebook.com, they could see, oh, you know, Jeremy went to EFF.org. Uh, they just wouldn't be able to tell, was I, you know looking at the blog on EFF.org or renewing my membership or what. Um, well, and sometimes just knowing the website itself where you're going. Oh, that you, tells you plenty. You pretty much know most of what a person Right. If I'm, if I'm going to nytimes.com versus foxnews.com, I think that tells you a little bit probably about a certain's political inclinations one way or another. Uh, you know, if I'm going to my church website, 
uh, that probably tells you that you know, or or my synagogue, my mosque, you know. Yeah. If you're if you're looking up, uh, you know, if you're looking up the nearest gun the gun show, if you're looking up uh, where Planned Parenthood is, I mean, all of the kind of things that are political in nature when we engage in it, uh, this is now going to be cataloged in a way that has never happened before. Yeah, um, and and to be clear, you know, we're not saying that this stuff doesn't already happen to some extent. There's plenty of third party tracking, and EFF fights it. Like we do, we do everything we can. It's more just like the power of our ability to actually help people in the first place. Yeah, so we can help like individuals fight third party tracking online. We can help you fight the tracking by the Googles and the Facebooks of the world. Once ISPs get the ability to jump in, we can't create a TLS everywhere. You know, we've done what we can. We're going to continue pushing encryption, uh, but ISPs are in a unique position of power, and that's why we need these rules. Um, you know, we won't stop. Even if we lose here, we're not going to stop. Uh, but, you know, we're, that's why we're worried, I think, is the biggest thing. It's, you know, we can't, I mean, I've definitely seen people say, you know, if you're relying on, you know, rules in the government to protect you, forget it. Um, and to some extent, that's true. But there's only so much we can do from a technical perspective to protect you from your ISP. I mean, we could try to get everyone to use Tor and VPNs, uh, but that's a much harder lift then say, you know, install Privacy Badger as your browser extension. Well, you know, it, it, it'll really be a shame if only the technically savvy right. get privacy. Like, that's what I don't want to have happen. Right. And I'm and, worried that's what will happen. Well, and also just kind of to, to connect to that, um, while these companies push the limits of the law uh, on a regular basis, th they also take into the account liability, right? They look at the law and they say, you know, if we do this and we're caught, we're going to owe a lot of money. It's going to be very damaging to our profits. So, so for the most part, you know, any any responsible company just doesn't do it in the first place. Um, there, there is a lot of of power. You know, this is kind of like the corporate lawyers. You know, they look at the law and they look at the rules and they make, they give advice to the company where they can push the envelope. And the moment they're violating the law and they're caught, you know, by investigative work that we can do at EFF uh, or or journalists or or other or other folks out there on the internet. Um, you know, there are penalties and ramifications that we can invoke to, to discipline that, that activity. Uh, but if they pass SJ Res 34, the, the rule to pass the repeal of the FCC's broadband privacy rules, they, they will have been given an extraordinary gift to be able to go to court and say, Congress has spoken, the FCC cannot discipline, us, discipline our privacy invasive practices. And, and you know, we will fight that fight in court, but we will be fighting it at, so, at a, a disadvantage. So can't the FCC just write new rules if these ones get overturned by Congress? Like, yeah. can so, we just lobby the FCC again and maybe try to convince them to, to write new rules? So the, the, yeah, the fundamental issue here that I think the Senator Flake uh, of Arizona, who's the primary author of this bill, uh, has not given enough credit to is the the damage he's doing with the Congressional Review Act as well, a process. Why is it damaging? So, so a Congressional Review Act, if it's enacted in a law, and it's a super, it's a very rare procedure. I mean, it's almost never been successful for the 30 plus some years that it's existed. Um, it essentially allows a, a senator to look at a regulation or a rule that was enacted towards the end of the last administration. Uh, bypass the Senate filibuster and, and utilize kind of what's called an expedited schedule. It makes it really fast. I mean, we've been fighting this fight for close to a month, which is super fast for Congress. Wait, so so did Congress thoroughly debate this? I mean, have there been hearings about this where they actually got testimony? About the... About the CRA, the, about repealing the privacy rules. Way back in the day, they, they there was probably a lot of debate. I mean, this is an old rule, and this is... We're talking about, like, the... I think the But 80s. about this particular... No, but not about the CRA. I'm not asking about repealing oh, the, the FCC's FCC. privacy rules. Like, no. You said they're rushing yeah. it through. So they haven't even heard... That's, had hearings or had testimony. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's the worst part about all this, is there is this enormous rush... I mean, we're talking about four weeks since introduction that they're going to try and make this law uh, without any sort of uh, cons consultation with legal experts who have all saying this may have extraordinary uh, ramifications for consumer privacy. Um, you know, we, if you go to our, our blog, you, you'll see the, the legal analysis I've written out kind of explaining when you pass a repeal under Congressional Review Act, you are also telling the federal agency that they can't create rules that are, quote, unquote, substantially similar. What does that mean, right? Does that mean that the FCC then in the future, if they change their mind and Congress is like, oh, you know what, we were wrong to repeal this, FCC, please update the rules. 
will the SEC be unable to do that because the new rules will look substantially similar, you know, in terms of legal terms? Uh, and if they are, they're prohibited. They're they're prohibited. And so the yeah. FCC won't be able to write new rules. No, I That's mean, what so it comes down to fundamentally, and 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 the the big challenge for for us is like if say the FCC in the future, right? This is like a common sense one. What if the next FCC says? Uh, the ISP is not allowed to look at your browsing history, which is essentially a, a piece of the current rules mm-hmm. that exist now. The cable and telephone industry and their lawyers will go straight to court and they'll challenge the FCC and say, Congress said that's a substantially similar rule to what we just repealed, therefore the FCC can no longer do that. Um, if you look at the privacy rules the, the, that exist that are taking effect now, uh, that, was, that, was create, that were updated last year, they encompass a lot of our activity that potentially Congress is now taking off the table. When as, you say our activity, what do you mean? Just our, our activity online, the things so that we do. Browsing history, app usage. Your uh, MAC address. Uh, IP addresses, inserting tracking cookies into your traffic, yep. but also things that you would normally so- associate with just having an account, like you know, name, billing, address. Social security numbers. I mean, they, All they, that stuff is just going to lose its protection. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's, that's a, you know, it, it's one of those things where... Um, you know the FCC did did the right thing. You know, once in a while the, the government actually does the right thing, and this is one of those where they said all of these things that you do on the internet that are private in nature, the cable company and telephone company have to have your permission. And and I think to be clear, you know, uh, EFF is often considered a pretty libertarian organization, so it's kind of weird for us to be sitting in these chairs saying the government did the right thing, right? Especially because we sue the government a lot. Uh, <laughs> And, and I think the, the real kicker for us is if people had actual, like, compet- co- options, if there was competition yep. in ISPs, I don't think we'd be saying this. I think we'd be saying, let, let the free market sort it out. But the problem is there is no, like, it doesn't make sense to have 10 different cable companies dig 10 different trenches to lay 10 different cables to go to your house. And that's part of why there isn't a lot of competition when it comes to broadband in this country. You know, the majority of Americans do not have multiple choices. You have maybe cable, maybe DSL, and if you're and maybe and maybe wireless. And I would argue wireless with the really, you know, restrictive data caps isn't even an option. So you get maybe cable, maybe DSL. So that's two. Uh, if you're really lucky and you live in a big city, that's great. That's wonderful. Like San Francisco is great. We have actually like a privacy uh, concerned ISP in San Francisco. Uh, but my mom lives in, you know, the middle of nowhere uh, in this country. And she has one choice, and that's it. And if they decide they're going to start selling her data, her options are live with it or don't have internet access, which is not really a choice. And so that's why we think we need somebody, and in this case it's the FCC, to step in and preserve our privacy. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. The the enormous amount of concentration we have in in high-speed broadband uh, forces us to have to think about, you know, clear rules that govern their behavior because – you know, it, it's laughable in most parts of this country for someone to tell you, well, if you don't like your broadband provider, just switch to another one. Um, if you've taken the time to research what your options are, if you want anything above 25 megabits per second, which nowadays barely cuts it for, for most of the kind of that cutting edge stuff, um, you and 51% or more of this country have only one yep. choice. Uh, they're, they're effectively regional monopolies. You don't have cable companies competing with other cable companies in this country. They all have their own cities and their own territories. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up soon. Uh, so, so uh, we have one last quick question, and then we're going to remind everyone, go to act.eff.org, uh, because even if we don't stop this in the Senate, we can still kill this in the House. Uh, the question is, is there help on your website regarding VPNs for less savvy users? So, if you go to so we do not recommend specific VPNs. Uh, that would take a lot of research. We haven't had time to do. But if you go to ssd.eff.org, uh, then uh, then you can find information uh, about uh, you know how to use a VPN, what it does for your traffic. Uh, you would probably have to look through the index to find it, but ssd.eff.org. So unfortunately, I have a radio thing to go to. Uh, so I'm going to have to take off right now. Yeah, I'll go ahead, um, I'll go ahead and, and, and wrap up for us. But so uh, Ernie will wrap up. And again, act.eff.org. Yeah, act.eff.org. You know, not only that, it would be great that you, that if you're listening and, and you, as you hear this, contact your senator and also contact your member of the House. You have two senators, one representative in the House, in the House 
Uh, tell them where you stand on consumer privacy. Oh, we got a, a colleague of mine joining us here. Um, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Tag oh. team, Dave. You're in. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> All right. Do it, Dave. How's it um, going? I, I, I'm Dave Moss. I am on EFF's activism team, and if you joined early on, it's my fault that uh, we had some <laughs> echo for the first couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to fill in for Jeremy for the last few minutes of this. I, I know we just posted it again to Twitter, and so I don't want to cut it off for people who just joined us. But uh, I'll sit here and uh, look smart there next you go. to Ernesto. There you go. No, no, Dave is smart. No, just, um, the the fundamental facts are if you take the time to contact your legislator, your member of the House and your two senators, that has an impact. But don't even stop there. Get your friends to do it, right? The, the, if, if you and every single person can get two or three of their friends to take just the five minutes it takes to make that call, uh, it will make a difference. You know, party lines and, and pol the political parties and, and kind of the, the rhetoric that surrounds uh, where Democrats stand or Republicans stand means nothing, means nothing compared to the power of the, of the voter's voice. Um, it's just a fact, from my experience, having worked in D.C. for a long time, uh, that not enough people at times take the time to pick up that phone and, 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 and tell them where they stand. And I, I will tell you that the people who rely on, on your silence uh, are in fact the the special interests the cable in this instance the cable and telephone companies are hoping you do not take the time to tell your legislator where you stand. So uh, Ernesto, can you take us a little bit through the process? You might have addressed this before, mm -hmm. but how thoroughly did Congress debate this? Uh, on this specific repeal, not at all. There there's been no hearings uh, consulting legal experts explaining the ramifications of what they're doing right now, and you know, we we at EFF you know have had been working on this for about four weeks because that's about how long they've been uh, since the introduction of this legislation uh, and now already moving to the United States Senate for, for a vote to the floor. Um, that's an absurdly fast and, uh, process for, for United States Senate and for Congress generally to, to make law, right? This is, this is stuff we're going to have to live with uh, for a very long time, you know, absent a new action by Congress uh, in the future. And, is, and so I think not enough thought has been given to this by the proponents uh, and the author about what we're talking about, and we're effectively talking about potentially ending consumer privacy online. So uh, Senator Brian Schatz had a pretty good Medium post uh, about this issue this morning. Who are some of the senators who have been really good about uh, defending privacy you know, with this, this bill? Mm -hmm. So they, kind of the lead uh, defenders, uh, you know, I have to give out to Senator Edward Markey from Massachusetts. He has been a very good friend uh, to, to EFF and their membership on all our issues, on civil liberties and privacy generally. Uh, and, and he's leading the charge in, the, in, in this space. Uh, Senator Blumenthal uh, from Connecticut, uh, Sen Senator Schatz from Hawaii, um, Senator Franken from Minnesota has always been a very, uh, you know, in, in essence, you know, we can call him a privacy hawk as well, uh, has been very good on, on these issues. And, you know, I think it's unfortunate that it has become a partisan issue because it, it, privacy, protecting people's privacy, has regularly been a bipartisan issue. We, at EFF, we, we are able to work with both, both parties uh, fairly effectively to try and protect uh, people's uh, ability to keep their personal information intact and, and to themselves. Um, I just think right now the cable and telephone industry have been successful at convincing the Republicans that this is somehow a free market uh, change in law and not uh, essentially a, a grab bag giveaway to, to them to reverse course on what has been about 20 years of, of consumer privacy law. So I believe we have a, a call tool up at act.eff.org. When people call their senators to talk about this, how, how in-depth should they go in explaining it? Do they need to have, you know, be fully literate on every line of the, the legislation, or, you know, is it a more simple, simple can, sort of thing they need to tell? You can make it real simple, and, and having worked there myself, I can tell you, as long as you say, I, you know, you have to tell them where you are, because they need to know if you're a voter, uh, and you tell them what, what you stand on. One sentence. I support my privacy online, right? I, I oppose... SJ Res 34, which is the bill they're debating right now. Um, I do not support repealing the FCC broadband privacy rules. You could say any one of those things, and that is more than enough information for, for the, the folks who are recording that information to report to the senators um, where you stand and where their voters stand. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it will take probably less than five minutes. So let's do a quick demo real quick. Ring, ring, ring. Am I the staffer? You're the staffer. Yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, Congress. You know, Senator Flake's office. 
Hey, uh, Senator Flake, my name is Dave Moss. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I just want to tell you that I'm your constituent and I urge you to oppose the CRA resolution to kill the FCC's privacy rules. Okay, uh, I will record that. Can I get your your address? Uh, you know, no. 1515 is, yep. 70th Street, 85254. Okay, great. The, I will let the senator know. And then that's Excellent. pretty much Click. the end of the conversation. And that's, that's all it is. So... Um, so I think we, we, we can go ahead and wrap it up there. Did you have any last thoughts? Uh, I know the vote is happening pretty soon. Yeah, we'll see. We'll check our blog. We'll report out how the vote goes. Uh, if it does pass the United States Senate, and we don't know the outcome right now. We know it's pretty close. Uh, so every call matters. Every person you get to activate and, and speak to the legislature right now, legislator right now is helpful. Um, depending on how the outcome goes, if it goes to the House, then, then we need to – the campaign shifts to the House – uh, and, and we fight the next stage of the fight there. And after the House, it'll, it'll be up to the president if they pass it there as well. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today, Ernesto. And thanks, thanks to Jeremy, me. who has gone off to talk to some radio. And again, uh, we're the Electronic Frontier Foundation. You can take uh, action right now by going to act.eff.org. You'll see at the very top of the page, there is the, uh, the button to click that will walk you through the process of calling your member of Congress. Uh, anyways, thanks for, for joining us today.